hey everyone hey guys i hope everyone is doing good today and today we are here with a long-awaited dev stream for our new event light the shadow and today we are here with senia game designer hey senia how you're doing oh we can't hear you you're muted we can't hear you <laughs> damn no can you no. hear me now yes, yes, yes we can, we can. Hey! <laughs> so you, you see me it's time for the event then <laughs> <laughs> And obviously, we are also here with Dennis, uh, your favorite lead designer. I hope you are doing good today, Dennis. Hi, yes, very well. Very excited. Well, I think there's like some volume bar over your name. I'm sorry for that. I fixed that. That's so, perfectly fine. <laughs> so, uh, without further ado, let's dive into our discussion. Uh, we will have a lot to go through uh, all the event stuff you waited for, uh, as well as some uh, gameplay changes that comes with the event. So this will be a long one, guys. So I hope you're ready. And uh, as you know, the stream will be, uh, I mean, the event will be coming tomorrow. So I hope you are ready for everything that's in front of us. And uh, let's start with our introduction section. So, uh, this is actually our biggest event so far. It will be also be pretty long, uh, which we will review in a second. And uh, it will have new mechanics, uh, more of everything basically, uh, even a new time of day. Uh, and yeah, I can't wait to talk about and it for you guys. And then maybe a bow, maybe, uh, who knows, you know? We, we don't know it yet, Dennis, don't, don't... <laughs> I mean, okay, you guys saw the trailer, right? And uh, yeah, it's it's a topic that uh, you guys have been asking for, the weapons as well as the theme of the event. So uh, I think you will all really enjoy what's coming up. And uh, after this event, our next event will be uh, Halloween's event. So obviously events are an ongoing thing in the game now and uh, yeah. We will have more to come after this one is done. Uh, yeah, so let's start with a small overview of the event as usual. So the duration of the event, ta da da. Maybe you saw our hashtags on social media with the countdown. But Light the Shadow is coming in one day, uh, exactly at 2 p.m. UTC tomorrow. So uh, for uh, European Central Time, that would be 4 uh, p.m. But you can transfer it to any region and it will start at that time. And uh, it will come to all platforms together. And uh, yeah, uh, we have a new event theme songs uh, that you guys already, I saw you guys commenting on it and loving it. It's actually available on all major uh, streaming platform uh, with Port Sulfur Blend Band. So you can find it on Spotify, uh, YouTube Music, uh, Apple Music and everywhere else. So make sure to check it out and listen to it a lot. It's called Light the Shadow. Makes sense. Uh, and uh, we have a brand new event page, which comes with all events, which you will uh, see the first time to uh, when you log in. And it will look something like this. So maybe, Xenia, uh, if you want to say anything about that page uh, in particular. Yeah, sure. It's, it's like, uh, like for every event, we have like welcome page with our tutorial cards, with which can give you like brief, uh, small explanation what what is this going to do. Uh, what you're going to do there so like there you can see like some some splitting between like throwing axe bow and arrow or maybe not because we didn't mention this before right <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so, some new objects uh, uh some even event items maybe some something that will help you to earn more points and of course like brand new hunters yeah and obviously we will show all that in a second so uh i think uh uh yeah, so as Senia mentioned, you will earn all the exclusive rewards and maybe even more this time if you uh, 
participate and uh, put in the effort and uh, we will actually have some new activities uh, or new ways to earn points compared to our previous events but we will go into details about all that and we will also have some new mechanics in the game that uh, you can use to help out with the collection of the points uh, and it will look pretty cool so uh, it will be fun and as I mentioned yeah all the new ways to uh, earn points and we will have a uh, very first time uh, time limited event store which where you can uh, buy some awesome stuff but we don't want to reveal that just yet either so uh, you will have to wait to see that but this is also a new thing we never had before and uh, i think it's time uh, to uh dive into the biggest portion of the event or at least uh the whole new thing that's completely different about this one compared to the others is the choose your path so as you guys saw in the trailer there's two paths you can choose and uh, let's uh, talk about uh this path so you have two initial progression path you have to take one is for the throwing axe we call cleave the shadow and the other is the hunting bow which pierces the shadow so you will have to choose a side but don't worry uh even if you choose a side after you complete one you will be able to participate in the other one as well and uh, we have uh, different uh, reward progression for both sides and as i mentioned you can unlock the second path after completing the first one uh, if you guys want to mention anything in particular like just in the overview side dennis maybe no, I, th I, th I think we should dive right into the paths and then okay i mean step by step we can sure do that so uh then i think the first thing we should do is look at something really cool I love it. Yep, so our first uh, path is the throwing axe. Uh, so after you select the screen, you select the uh, throwing axe, let's say, in this case. And uh, then you will unlock a progression path, which will give you instant access to the throwing axe tool. Um, One second. <laughs> Slow down here. <laughs> We, we have something to talk about. Um, so actually, when, when as, you, as you could see on the previous screen, there's the screen with the two path selection. And also there is even like a uh, disclaimer that don't worry, you will be able to complete both of the passes and we are not locking you after the making a choice from another progression. But you just need to decide where you want to start. So as Ben said, uh, let's imagine that you pick the throwing axe pass which will lead you to the uh, new event page, which we will show you a little bit later with the different rewards there. And the rewards there, of course, it's like a skin for legendary skin for throwing axe, a new, um, new legendary hunter, as well as blood bonds, hunt dollars, and even trade for uh, throwing axe. So that's the first time when, we, when you will be able to unlock trade via the event progression. And the first unlock that's going to be in the in the progression bar, the base tool, the throwing axe itself. So when you start the progression, you will need to collect some points to unlock this uh, tool. So it's not initial unlock, but it's like the very first unlock in a 100 event points and you will get an, uh, get access to the uh, base tool. Yeah, which is the throwing X, and uh, we will have a gameplay section a bit later where we actually talk about how the new items work. But first, we want to go through the event part uh, of the presentation, basically. And uh, yeah, so Sina mentioned the unlock uh, three. So let's just take a look at uh, that page now. So maybe just, uh, you want to drive us through it, yeah. As a, as a quick thing before we do that, um, so we mentioned already like that you're going to unlock these gameplay elements, obviously, throughout the event, right? Just a very important point to, to mention right before, because I can already see some questions popping up here and there. Of course, once the event is concluded, these weapons, these equipment and all of the stuff that will still be available. The only thing, obviously, that will be event exclusive is the legendary content, as in the previous events. But anything that is gameplay relevant will, of course, after the event be normally unlockable through the normal progression we have but for the purpose of the event you have to kind of work a little bit for getting your hands on them that's why choosing the path and this thematic differentiation is so interesting for us this time around but also the good thing uh, 
if you will be able to get it via the event, uh, it doesn't matter which rank you are. You don't need to wait like the correct rank to unlock or follow the like uh, different variants to unlock the stuff. So once you reach the unlock and with event points, that's yours, no matter which rank you are. Yeah, so this applies to traits uh, as well for uh, the weapons. So let's say you can see there's a trait unlock for the Tomahawk. It doesn't matter what rank you are, you will unlock it during the event. But obviously after the event, it will be tied to uh, the regular progression system. But we will yeah, we also talk, talk about, about all of that exactly a little bit later. Yeah. First now, let's talk about the events and let's look, have a look at the progression for the throwing axe. Yeah, so as Senior mentioned, uh, on the throw XX side, you can unlock hand, uh, get hand dollars, uh, blood bonds, as well as uh, obviously two legendary skins uh, for items, and then one legendary hunter at the very end uh, as the last reward. We will show you all that in a second as well. Uh, and uh, as she also mentioned, if you uh, finish the path, you will be able to uh, continue in the other path. So. As you can see, you will be able to continue the hunting bow path after finishing the X1. But uh, we have a video to show uh, of the progression system. So uh, while I'm showing that, I, maybe Senia can explain how it exactly works in action. Yeah, so uh, basically uh, the, the progression contains like you already like familiar with with our progress bar and different reward steps. So we have some in between rewards in this progression, which are uh, hand dollars and blood bonds and also like unique skins and uh, even trade, which you, you are looking just like earning points and you're getting this trade and you can use it after this again, no matter which rank you are. Also, there are daily caps will be presented but one important thing that daily caps will be presented on the first chosen path so if you pick the throwing axe as a first progression you will be uh, seeing like daily caps in this progression but if your friend chose uh, the bow, uh, hunting ball pass then locks will be presented there once you will move to the second progression uh, daily locks will not be presented there so you can move like straight for forward to 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 the to the end of the second progression uh, the one important thing here that uh bonus points like overflow uh not bo i'm sorry not bonus points sure. but event points overflow is not going to be transferred to the second progression you should uh, keep in mind that you start your progression with a zero point so if you completed the the uh, first pass you'll be automatically redirected and then you'll start the progression with zero but another uh nice thing there so in in the start of each progression you will get to boost consumables for free for both passes but a little bit uh, later, we will talk about those consumables. Yeah, exactly. We will tell you how the boost works this time because it will be also a bit different than uh, usually. And so uh, basically, in a nutshell, what you get is two times the same progression. It's basically two events, two events in one. Uh, at first, you pick one path, and then you pick the other one, and that means lots of lots of rewards, which is really really cool. Exactly. There's a lot of rewards to unlock, guys. Like, it's crazy. And they look so cool. So, uh, with that being said, let's look at the rewards from the Throwing Axe path. The path of the axe. And the first one is a legendary Winfield Marksman called Biophoenix. And it looks something like this. It's quite beautiful. I like it. It's fi finally like a skin for the, for the Winfield Marksman. I've been waiting for that for quite some time now. Yeah, I know so, a lot of people uh... have been, actually, yeah. As we as we promised and as we were always saying, like eventually every weapon will get their skin, even if multiple sometimes. So um, now it's the Winfield's turn finally. Yeah, you will not get some lore reading right now, but you will have to do that during the event to find out about the story of each weapon. So we didn't want to reveal that right now. Uh, the second one is the legendary throwing axe itself, which is the Tomahawk. And uh, here it is. So, yeah, it's obviously a brand new uh, tool and a brand new scheme for it right from the get-go. And it looks freaking amazing. Yeah, this is amazing. I love it. And uh, the biggest reward, obviously, is the hunter for this path, uh, the third son. And he looks something like this. <laughs> yeah, it's you know. really cool that basically each of the progression paths has like legendary hunter at the end. So it means that technically you can just unlock two legendary hunters just by playing, which is like double the amount you normally get, which is great. So I think everybody's happy. I'm happy. 
exactly and uh that's it for the throwing axe path uh and uh, let's uh take a look at the hunting bow and uh let's just look at it in a second oh, what these things next to it could be i don't know i don't know it looks like some weird sticks i don't know could this be arrow types? some weird mm. sticks yes mm. <laughs> <laughs> So the hunting bow path, uh, so similarly as to the last uh, path, the first unlock you get is access to the hunting bow, which is a brand new weapon. And uh, the hunting bow uh, comes with two traits, which you also unlock during the progression path uh, in that particular uh, path. And then you can also unlock three custom ammo variants, but we will talk a bit about them later in the stream. But uh, I guess you can see a bit of sneak peek of them right here. There that... might be some hints there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we won't say what they are, but you can guess. I already see some guesses in the chat. Uh, you guys are right. Not not all of you, though. <laughs> and then uh, as on the last path as well, you unlock uh, two uh, exclusive legendary weapon skins that you cannot get anywhere else just during the event. And obviously, the exclusive legendary hunter at the very end of this progression tree. Uh, and uh, we also have an image of the progression tree. Uh, Xenia, maybe you want to drive us through this as well? Yeah, so basically, uh, the hunting ball progression is like a bit different that we all got used to from the previous event when we have like legendary skins and some in between rewards like boost consumables, hunt dollars, blood bonds. We kept it for throwing axe. But this progression is a pure like gameplay unlock. So, uh, as an in between rewards, you are not actually getting like pack of consumables or hunt dollars. No, you're getting unlock for custom armor or hunting ball. You're getting unlock uh, traits there. So you can you can get your hands like first there and try it out. So that's uh, that's the prog this progression about. So basically, when you're choosing the pass, um, I mean keep in mind that uh, gameplay stuff will be available after event is over. So like exclusive stuff inside the event is like legendary hunter, legendary weapon skins. Uh, and when you're choosing the pass, like what are you more interested in, like to unlock uh, gameplay uh, gameplay uh, stuff first, or just earn maybe some blood bonds or maybe hunt dollars inside the progression, or like which hunter even do you like more? Yeah, which I think is really cool. It gives you that choice. Like you can kind of even like complement each other, right? Like so, one guy in, in the team plays with uh, the the throwing axe first, and then the other guy picks the bow and arrow, and you can kind of support each other. Because we're going to talk about how you can earn points, etc., in a minute as well. Exactly, and uh, just like in the other path, if you finish this first, then you will have a chance to complete the whole other path as well. Cine also mentioned it just now, so don't worry. I still seen some people in chat not knowing or not understanding. When you finish one path you uh, can move on to unlock the other one as well. So you won't miss out no, on half of the rewards. Just reward, keep on playing, you get everything. Exactly. Just, just, just one thing to mention, maybe maybe it might look a bit confusing because we mentioned that uh, daily caps will be presented only in one first chosen progression, but here we see like on the bow, throwing an axe and bow and arrow, but it's just because when we are capturing, it's always like first chosen progression for us. So don't worry daily caps only presented on the first chosen progression no matter which progression you choose you choose yeah and they're basically just like in order to allow everybody to kind of like get into this and not have people like complete the event in the first 24 hours so it just helps us to wind up a little bit because as you guys seen in the beginning that event will go for quite some time and we're talking about like four weeks of event time which is uh, quite a lot so we want to make sure that everybody still has also the chance to really go and uh, unlock stuff and play with things uh, as the event progresses also daily caps to allow you to earn some hunter xp exactly. so <laughs> exactly and in Minlaval in the background i already showed uh, the rewards uh, a little sneak peek at least but uh, now it's time to talk about them uh, at least look at them in a bit more detail so uh, we have a new legendary conversion pistol which is called faultless and uh, it looks quite fancy <laughs> that's the oh, this one is really nice because like as you can notice there like it's also uh, there's like a physical change to it a geometry change where we kind of smooth out the the whole drum so normally it is kind of like a little bit with the with the rims inside like 
uh, as you know, the Cold War conversion pistol, but this time it's going to be smoothed out, similar to what the Lemap looks like, which is actually a lot closer to, to like the, the, the old conversion pistols of that area. Um, so we wanted to give this a bit more of a vintage look, uh, like someone has been using this for quite some time. And the second legendary is for the hunting bow itself, the Wayfinder. Looks super yeah, cool. So this, 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 this is really, really nice. Uh, like, uh, I mean, the hunting bow on its own is, is, is quite a piece of work. I really love it. But like just being able to just go around it thematically like that, just, just it adds like one layer on top for me personally. And uh, obviously the last uh, unlock of the path is uh, the Exile Legendary Hunter. She's also really badass, so it will be a hard choice which one to get first. <laughs> which would you go for, Benz? Hmm. Uh, I will probably go for the hunting bow just to mess around with it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, probably uh, since since I had the, the the privilege of being able to play this for quite a bit already, um, uh, I'll probably probably go for the throwing axe. That way I can I can support the people I play with because uh, throwing axe is really really nice as a tool. It's really really tactical. I like the flexibility it offers. And what about you, Senior? Which one would you prefer? <laughs> I mean, everyone is is voting for a bow and arrow, but like I said, the gameplay stuff you will be able to get anyway. And I, I think uh, that uh, Sword Sun uh, Legendary Hunter looks dope. <laughs> wow, okay. That's a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chat, you can like uh, write hashtag uh, throwing axe or hashtag uh, hunting bow to uh, write your choice. And I guess we will count them. Uh, I won't, but uh, yeah. But, but <laughs> you can show your <laughs> <laughs> but actually, if you're if you're playing with friends, so maybe that there will be reason to split your choices. Like we we are going to talk about it a bit a bit further. Uh, but maybe there is a reason to pick like different passes and play together. It looks really split. Split actually, I'm surprised. <laughs> that's that's cool to see though. So. Which is good that we we yeah. did something right. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on to the event points. So uh, we mentioned you have a bit more options uh, to collect points uh, during this event, but uh, we uh, uh, obviously uh, have the similarities between previous events. So you can collect uh, event points in multiple ways. First of all, by exploring the map and doing side activities, you know, you're kind of used to that already. Uh, playing the objective, so uh, in this case, killing, killing hives, armors, or the bosses, uh, but we will tell you in detail in a sec. And uh, a brand new uh, way to earn points, which you have been asking for, a lot of you, is PvP. So that's a brand new thing coming with this event. I know a lot of you are happy about that, and it will hopefully help you progress a bit quicker if you're a great player so it won't help us much but <laughs> hopefully it will help you <laughs> and uh yeah let's just uh, take a look at each category one by one starting with exploration so uh in this event you will have uh, two ways to uh gain points in this manner and the first one is uh, destroying a pyre uh which will gain you uh two event points and uh i think i can even show you how it looks in game um can we actually slow down here a little and just like give yeah. more uh, more appreciation to like amazing amazing like artwork around this and just to explain a bit how this works so actually since like it's already like not a spoiler and we do explain so this time event objects are highlighted in the dark side so uh every pyre that located on the map and every second object which is like plain like exploration part is also highlighted in the dark side so you can see on this video then you're like change, changing the vision to the dark side it's like it has like this nice uh, nice roots and nice uh, white white coloring and the effects there so uh, to collect points from the pyres you actually need to destroy this and we have another object that will be uh, object that will be seated on the map it's ward um can we show yes. this yeah there we are so uh please, please do not destroy wards we are uh, interacting with them and we're lighting it up so they 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 are working in the way that every every team or every player uh, like let's let's talk about team because even like single play, one player is like counted as a team every team can interact with ward once so even if you already interacted with this there might be another team who will come and can interact at once 
and get points. And of course, all points are shared within the team. All orange points. Words are also uh, highlighted in the dark side, as you might see there. Um, and the thing is that first team that activated actually lights up these torches there. So when next team is coming and see the torches are lighted up, so they they already can draw the conclusion that there was someone before them. Awesome. So yeah, that's the two ways to collect points by exploration. Uh, Sina mentioned it's shared between your team and uh and yeah it looks quite cool and uh, she also mentioned all the interesting stuff about dark side but we will actually show you that in a second as well in more detail and uh if you have nothing to add senia i think we should move on to playing the objective uh so uh both paths uh are mean uh, let's say both weapons have a different way to earn points for the hunting bow uh you can earn extra points by killing hives uh with the weapon so you just have to basically kill the hive with the hunting bow and you will earn two points and uh with the uh, tomahawk tool i mean uh, sorry throwing axe but you can use the tomahawk skin obviously uh you will also earn uh, two points uh for your whole team so uh dennis also mentioned that it's a good idea to uh, take different uh, weapons into a game because then you can actually collect with both for your whole team and i see i see the questions popping up in the chat uh, that like will be points shared if uh, people uh, inside one team playing for different paths and that's why uh, we mentioned that it might be a, start, a smart idea actually to pick different paths because yes if you're playing for hunting ball and, and your teammate is playing for throwing axe all collected points they're still shared so you consistently uh, can use the hunting bow to kill hives and earn points and your teammate can constantly use uh, throwing axe to kill armor and still earn points and they all will be from the same pool and will be shared within the team exactly so basically one brings a hunting bow the other brings a throwing axe the third brings the sticky bomb for the bosses so that's how uh, you can maximize your points and uh, obviously get four points for each boss kill uh, uh is that tied to weapons or is that no you just just need to kill the boss and that gives you the points basically so so you can you can kill him with a new tool and a new weapon sure absolutely um but you can also kill him any other way it's basically just to make sure that you that your objective you try to get to the boss you try to be close around the boss and and grab those guaranteed kills there awesome uh and we mentioned that there's a third way to earn points uh which is uh pvp so this is quite straightforward you just have to loot the hunter uh corpse and you will gain five points for your team and uh we have a, sh a small video to uh, show you this as well because it's completely new to the game yeah, what's what's important here is maybe just as a, as a quick explanation. So we thought about like, okay, how can we introduce PvP into this into this rule set? And um, one of the most obvious things could be, yeah, you know, but just reward them when they kill someone. That the thing is like this game actually lives and breathes not having all the information, and that includes not 100% sure sometimes knowing whether you killed someone or not, and just keeping this a little little bit obfuscated. Obfuscated. So we want to make sure that 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 we stay true to this concept and say that you know what, like you can get points from PvP, but it's bound to corpses. And as a side effect, obviously this also has an advantage for people, for example, who bring vulture or just like sneak in the shadows a little bit because they can still go and get some points from looting corpses, even if they haven't been part in that fight. They still have a chance to to get some of these points, but obviously primarily rewards to people that that manage to fight other people and therefore yeah secure the corpse in order to loot it okay so that answered a lot of people in chat so you can indeed loot uh, one corpse multiple times and the points will still count to the whole team uh you can, yeah. you can loot them once per team once per team oh, once That's per important. Important. who's looting it the first guy looting it from your team will get the points for the team but mm -hmm. you cannot get them multiple times but other teams that might have a chance to loot that body still they can get their points as well for example if they bring the vulture trade that is okay and another question i've seen is that can you only do it for uh hunters your team killed or can you do it to any that hunters that hasn't been looted but i guess the vulture a any answered corpse, that. any corpse yeah. that might be still looted exactly so it's the, worth the, the, going it's, around the map it's about and the looting for... <laughs> exactly yeah. it's about the looting action not the kill action so you want to make sure that you can you can secure corpses obviously if you burn them you don't have anything to stop the burning well 
then you won't be able to loot them, which means you don't get the points. So it's just part of the normal strategy now. You have to consider whether you want to get those points or not, and then there's multiple options for you to go about that. Awesome. Uh, so uh, we already mentioned the points are shared within the theme. So uh, everyone in your team will get the points you collected and uh, vice versa. So you will get their points. It will be one pool of points. And uh, you will keep the points even if you died during the mission. So you won't uh, lose them or just keep only half. You will keep all the points. And uh, we also have a new accolade card for the event uh, as usual, uh, which you will be able to see after the, hopefully the first mission you played. If you didn't die in one second, uh, you will see that. And obviously that will also have the different tier system. So uh, bronze, silver and gold, depending on how well you did and i believe that's about event points unless uh there's something else to mention here but i think we covered all of it and if you guys have a question make sure to write it in chat and our kind moderators will collect them and uh, hopefully we can answer them at the end of the stream if we haven't already uh then let's move on to the new mechanics which uh senior already touched on a tiny bit uh most importantly that event objectives are highlighted in dark side but they have a range uh, which is default uh, by default 10 meters uh and i think uh, uh, sh uh we can show the video for this here and uh then we will also tell you how to increase the range you will uh, see these uh event items so basically initial range which will be given to like every player by default and you will see the icon saying like 10 meters it will be at the start of the game for any event objects and they will be highlighted in the dark side like you can see like even like they're on this shot like compared to the clues how they are highlighted there so that's a clear difference like between clues words and pyres there so you can spot them and you can pick the direction where you want to move uh so default range will be given uh, 10 meters to uh, on the distance where you can see uh, event objects in the dark side um so it's like literally to take like quick quick look around you and uh, realize if there's like in any house or anywhere nearby uh, any objects but you act you will be able actually to increase this range and uh, this time we also have like uh, known boost consumables they 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 are called uh, vapors and uh, besides boosting event points, like for all, any other previous event, they will also boost uh, highlight for uh, highlight range for even even objects. And maximum range what you can reach with the use boost consumable it's uh, seventy meters because range has uh, seventy meters hard cap on top, so you can't actually move like further even if you're using like uh, the, a lot a lot of consumables uh you still can increase maximum to maximize your amount of points but maximum number of uh meters that you can increase with a boost consumable 70 meters and 70 meters that's a lot that's half, <laughs> half a compound basically yeah so again 10 meters is the default and uh, you can boost it up to 70 as a maximum and i think in the video we showed it was 55 meters so somewhere in the middle but uh, it's quite cool and uh, how the, all the highlights work and I think it's like a really uh, funny or fun new mechanic to the game that uh, makes the event very unique. And uh, yeah, so you mentioned uh, the vapors, the new consumables, so uh, let's just talk about them a bit. Uh, we will have uh, three uh, different types of them. 15 proof vapors uh, for 40 blood bonds in the uh, store and... Uh, they will uh, increase your uh, points collected by 15% and uh, 5 meter range boost to the dark side enhancement. Uh, I already seen uh, people asking if it works for the whole team or just for you. Um, yes, both uh, event points and uh, like range meters, they are shared within the team. But like I already mentioned, uh, range has a cap. 70 meters so all boost consumable they're stacking and if the maximum amount of boost event points that you can reach is like 600 percent um but range will be kept at 70 so 70 is the maximum uh yeah as we mentioned you get one of these items uh on the beginning of your progression to start with Absolutely two even two, oh, two. Even. <laughs> that's even better yeah <laughs> uh 
Then uh, we have the medium sized version of this, which is 25 uh, proof vapor for 80 blood bonds. And uh, this will increase your points collected by 25% and uh, a 10 meter range boost to your dark side vision. And uh, then the biggest one is the 50 proof vapor for 130 blood bonds. And uh, this will increase your points collected for the whole team by 50% and uh, your dark side range for uh, the event. Uh, interactable items by 50 meters and, uh, I, I, I would like to clarify one thing because like there's like it's up in the, up in the, in the chat like uh, consumable increase your vision inside the dark side only for event objects so for pyres and for wards nothing that we're highlighting uh, anything else and you can increase the range uh, like by buying the consumable no that's specifically only for uh, event objects which are highlighted with this like nice white uh, white effect there so event only yeah so it's basically just to boost your points for you and your team like you don't really gain an advantage over anyone you can just find uh, the objects a bit easier and you gain a bit more percentage of points so you can uh, uh, unlock those legendaries a bit quicker and uh, yeah we can also show you how it looks in the game uh, with the example of the 50 proof one Yeah, so uh, after that animation, you will be able to, uh, as we mentioned, yeah, see... You can see the numbers like change in the bottom left, basically, and then that's the stack for the team, depending how much you boosted it. Uh, so it's pretty much the same mechanic as we've seen from, from other events, where after consumption, which you normally do in the beginning of the round, the effect comes into effect, obviously. But um, uh, you can also, if you want, for whatever reason, wait and do it at any point. Exactly, and uh, I think that's about the vapors. Uh, and you may ask at this point that, oh, are we having only two hunters? Just, just two hunt, just two hunters. I mean, it's it's only double the amount of the normal events we had last time, right? Like, uh, just two. Okay, we give you more. So, as we mentioned in the beginning, we will have a time limited event store for the very first time. And in that particular store, uh, you will be able to buy some legendary with blood bonds. So uh, you can buy a legendary math kit called the Waxwing just in the store and just during the, uh, the duration of the event. So you won't be able to buy it afterwards. And a legendary hunter as well, the Wayfarer. But if you want to get both of them, then uh, you can get a bundle uh, with like 20 10% uh, off and get both legendary uh, hunter and skin together in a bundle um but keep in mind that those uh, items and and they're they're event exclusive as well and they will be available only in uh, for for the duration of the event so in the event store page where you can you where you could buy uh vapors and where like all other boost consumables located okay, you can you can find uh, those items there but only for the duration of the event Exactly. So uh, let's look let's at have a look these at what items, they are. and uh, then we will also show you uh, the store page. So uh, the first state kit, as I mentioned, called the Waxwing, uh, looks something like this. I really like that. It goes very nicely with the hunters. It's very thematic. And now I can choose between the cold snap or this one. <laughs> <laughs> I always base it a little bit off <laughs> of the, the the hunters I'm using. So oh. I mean. I have the full collection, <laughs> so basically it's like it's my little my little purse for Monday, my little purse for Tuesday. So I can I can basically match them against my hunters, which is actually really really nice. Um, so this one obviously will be my go-to for the event. Yeah, uh, I see some people laughing at first aid kit, but let's be honest here. First aid kit is one of the most used <laughs> items in hunters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you will see it every single fight probably if you're not uh, some crazy six-star hunter. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, we have the legendary hunter, the Wayfarer, and uh, she looks awesome. Uh, what, what it is allows for is basically that if you go in with a trio, for example, like uh, each of you guys can have their own unique legendary hunter themed for the event. So I'm, I'm very curious to see how, how many how many teams you'll see running around with with like a mix of these uh, very awesome hunters. <laughs> Yeah, you like literally can reconstruct our trailer, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can reconstruct it on both ends, but I would suggest to use the one for the guys that actually kill the others. 
and uh yeah here is the store page uh, that i mentioned uh you can see uh the med kit costs 300 uh, blood points the hunter 800 and uh, you can also see the vapors there and uh yeah this is the wax pink in particular then this is the wayfarer super cool and then obviously uh we have the bundle i mentioned so for 990 blood points you can get actually both the math kit and the hunter but uh, keep in mind if you will purchase like single item like separately hunter and separately mad kit bundle will disappear because like you already purchased one 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 item out of like two this pair so like be careful if you want to obtain bundle <laughs> better to obtain bundle <laughs> it's it's a nice optional thing i really like that i mean just like with the vapors um i mean none of that is essential right this is this is um the chance for you to see hey i really like that i would like to get on top but you don't need the vapors to to unlock all of the other content you can just keep on playing and that's perfectly fine but if you want to speed up things a little bit um this is like your chance to do it and if you want to get more variety even then you also have the chance to do it by just getting these skins while the event is running exactly and uh I think some of you may ask at this point, like, oh, are we only getting three hunters this time? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really weak this time. We should but be yeah. ashamed of ourselves. And, uh, <laughs> no, we got you covered. We have one more. You might have already seen that one a little bit. We've teased it a little bit earlier. And with that being said, let's just uh, take a look at something quickly. Uh, yes, you uh, saw it in the trailer. Uh, there's a fourth hunter, and even more than that, actually, that uh, you can actually already get right now on Steam. It's available. The BioRate DLC you can already get, so you can even play with this hunter before the event, which is kind of crazy. But you, <laughs> you can get it right now. Basically, it's already available um, as a as a DLC. So if you already want to get into the mood for the event you can you can go to the service tonight already using one of the four if you get the dlc exactly and oh only for hunt uh, sorry we can't increase it this time but maybe next time you know <laughs> and uh yeah yeah so only only four hunters then only huh? four <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and only four hunters and uh what is it like six skins seven <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> quite a lot it's 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 a, it's a huge amount of content I'm, I'm, I'm really really happy uh, how this all turned out so um you can you can maybe see our excitement a little bit here today <laughs> yeah that's you seen it in the little uh trailer for uh bay of Wraith, is uh the new legendary knife uh the new legendary springfield compact striker and uh, the legendary hunter and uh we actually also have a small uh, video just to show you the two weapons uh so let's take a look at those here's the striker looks super cool and the knife verban yeah i really like that that's yeah, they so cool. both look really cool. <laughs> and they fit together perfectly with the Hunter as well. This is also something which is uh, important to understand. So since this is a DLC, it will be available all the time, right? So even when the event is over, this is your way still of being able to get a legendary, uh, like, a, uh, um, like Native American Hunter. And uh, it will be available if you want to get him for Christmas, you can get him Christmas. You want to get him like middle of the year, you can do that as well. So he will be just a regular DLC and you can buy them whenever you, you feel like it. 
Also, sure. worth to mention regarding the uh, blood bond uh, items in the store page. So once you unlock them with the blood bonds during the event, of course, they will stay with you. So it's not some, something that we are taking away after the yeah. event is over. It's a permanent unlock, but it will only be available um, to unlock um, during the event time. While the DLC, just to repeat that, will be available throughout the year once we introduce it. And there have been some people asking so when it's coming to console. Um, um, as far as I know, this will be also very, very shortly. Um, usually just like there's a bit of a delay in, in, in some of these. So expect that also to, to come online very soon and very much within the, the time frame of when the event is going. So you will be able to play with all of those 400s easily on all platforms while the event is running. And while we're talking items in the event store page, it's also worth to mention that in the quick play, you will be able to find uh, 15 proof per. So mm -hmm. not only only in the event store, but also in the quick play matches, because like I see I see um, questions popping up there about like, hey, will we see that there? Yes. <laughs> and and there's a hint in there. Yes, there will also be quick play. So, um, as, you, as, you might, <laughs> as you as you guys might remember from from the uh, from the last time when we had our boss revealed scrapping event, like scrapping obviously can't be in quick play. So um, that's why we prioritized uh, giving you guys a chance to experience a new boss. Um, this time around, um, things are looking very good. So um, there will be the quick play from the beginning and hopefully also still at the very end. So let's see how you break the servers, guys. Uh, but we're all very hopeful and it's looking <laughs> all very good. Awesome. And uh, let's just take a look at all uh, the skins as well, including the uh, DLC, like for the other. So obviously we have uh, the Legendary Hunter. Uh, do you pronounce it Techevraith? Tesh Dennis, maybe you want. To... Um, uh, so I, I wouldn't be able to tell that with, with full confidence, but so far I've always referred to him as Teshi Wrath. Teshi Wrath. So right, Wrath. Okay. Uh, Wraith, but Wrath. The, he looks really cool wanna... either way. <laughs> so he's included in the DLC, and you will be able to read his uh, backstory as well, probably already on Steam actually. So just uh, give it a look. Uh, when you can and uh, the two legendary weapons uh, starting with the nice knife verbena uh, which you already seen in the video looks really cool and uh, the springfield compact striker rates hand which is also super badass with uh, those drawings and markings and it fits the knife really well and the hunter as well so i mean it makes sense <laughs> And uh, I think that's about our DLC. Don't forget that it's already available and it will be available on console very soon. And as Danish mentioned, you will be able to get it uh, after the event is over as well. So that's not time limited or time based. And uh, before we dive into our gameplay uh, segment, let's just quickly take a look at uh, all our legendary events, uh, weapons that you can get during the event, just uh, so you guys won't forget. And then we will uh, dive into our gameplay changes uh, for the bow, for the new time of day and uh, the throwing axe as well. Now, so maybe just to wrap it uh, up about the event. So, to progression, you will be able to complete them both. So, in one, you will get like only gameplay unlocks. It's a hunting ball pot uh, for throwing axe. That also will be the progression will be filled with some hunt dollars and blood bonds. And also, I think worth to mention that. Um, if you already unlock this, uh, the gameplay stuff like traits, base weapon uh, or custom armor and if you're prestigious during the event while the event is running, you still will keep this uh, so you're not losing it. But of course, if the event is over and you decided to prestige after the event, of course you will lose it and you will need to unlock it with the ranking system. That's some really, really cool stuff here. I'm super, 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 super excited. And you won't have to wait much. It starts tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m. UTC. Yes. Okay, and it's uh, time so to talk the, about the gameplay. Before we head right into it, let me just say, say a couple of words. So, like, so mm -hmm. this this event is something which has been very special for us. Like, um, when we started, um, 
investigating into like oh what type of events would be interesting in hunt showdown like what type of, of really cool like engagement do you got what do you want to offer you guys like uh, the native americans have always been been one of our top choices and then due to the way we implemented things and obviously like certain events like Halloween, like the dates don't move, right? So, so they, they kind of kind of like affected our priorities a little bit in terms of how we organized our events, how we moved uh, to, to implement it and, and make them available to you guys. So that that's now if we finally have a chance to come back to, to, to this event, which has been really, really dear and precious to us. And one thing that is also very important is that this can be a very tricky subject, right? Native Americans and uh, specifically like the perils of the indigenous people at the time. It's something you have to be careful about because you want to treat us with respect. You, want, you don't want to just like make an Indian versus cowboy thing here, right? You want to be respectful of the setting. You want to incorporate it and you want to give them representation. And uh, because we, it's important for us to kind of showcase this a little bit, we also have a blog post that we released uh, yesterday, which gives a bit like behind the scenes impression to this. So I think this will be posted in the link here as well for people interested. So if you if you want to understand more how we went about that topic, how we how we made sure that we want to treat this in a respectful manner, but still incorporate it in a very interesting way into into the Hunt Children universe, then read up on it in that in that uh, blog post, and I'm pretty sure you guys will like what you see there as well. It's been a very very big pleasure working on this. Exactly, you can find our blog obviously on the Hunt uh, website or any social media will direct you to it. So. Make sure to read it it's uh, actually a very interesting read as well i think and uh uh i mean there has been a few questions regarding the event but i think we can answer those at the end and uh first let's just introduce all the other new things coming with the event uh, hand in hand as... so basically how, how does it all play <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly so uh first of all uh, you guys have seen that we have a new time of day which we named Sundown, and uh, this is our interpretation of Dusk. Uh, so uh, maybe, Dennis, you want to talk about that a bit and how we treat yeah, it compared so, so to basically, the other? basically, we, we looked into like different times of days and, and it's something we just over and over again, again and again, we're going to release new times of days because they, they just add interesting things. Um, like we, we added uh, initially to the golden, we added like the neutral, um, we added uh, the the um, the, the, the sun um, uh, sunrise um, um, time of day with the early mornings. And now we want to add one for sundown. Now we treat this technically as a low visibility um, time of day. So while we have um, at the moment on live, we have um, um, three times of days, which are at daytime. So our neutral time of day, um, the, the sunrise time of day, as well as the golden time of day. We also have two low visibility ones, which is fog and night. And now with sundown, we're adding a third, which means we can actually get like a fair split between them in terms of like three, four low visibility and three for daytime and uh, sundown will just basically appear in a regular rotation as per the rules of, of the low visibility ones. So you just come across it uh, here and there as a new time of day as you play the event. And obviously it will stay around after the event for you to enjoy. Yeah, so as Dennis mentioned, uh, it will stay permanently after the event is over and it will be available on all three maps, obviously. So uh, it will be just a brand new time of day in the game. And yeah, thank you for uh, pointing out that I wrote Interpretation, but Aeon is a great game, so it's it's, it's fitting there. <laughs> and uh, uh, let's, let's just take a look at the new time of day in a few pictures. Uh, it's quite beautiful, actually, I think. So... I really like it. What what you can also notice when you play this is like the light sources. They're much more, much much stronger. Like the stronger contrast. You see like the the, the fire effects and etc. Um, so you see more than obviously you can see on a night map or on a fog map. There's a further range, but still like you kind of like need to squint your eyes sometimes to see what's going on because you're just like in this twilight like uh, dusk setting where just there's barely any sun left and night is starting to creep in. It has like a really nice transition uh, in the uh, colors. It's like really beautiful, like purplish almost. I think it's really fitting actually. <laughs> we have a few more pictures to show you guys. This is like off the edge of the map, obviously. Yeah. So as, as I mentioned more. before, basically sundown will have the same chance as neither fog to appear. Yeah, really pretty. 
Okay, and uh, with that uh, being said, uh, I think we should talk about the bow. Yeah, let's talk about the bow. Everyone wants to talk about the bow. You guys waited enough. Let's let's get to it. Bow confirmed for real now. So let's just uh, look at it. We will have so much stuff to show you here, so you won't be disappointed. So uh, let's uh, look at it. As you can see, it may have multiple arrow types. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've pulled that one before, then. So let's oh, let's show them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the uh, hunting bow is going to be a new medium slot weapon. Uh, you will have to hold the fire button to charge a shot, just like you would do with a bow. Obviously, uh, you will be able uh, to equip multiple custom ammunition on it as well if you unlock them obviously so it will carry four uh, types of arrows including the base one so uh, the base one and three new it, it will have four to choose from but it can carry two at a time basically as normally the single shot weapons do. yes every so yeah. it's, it's down to how you equip them before whether it's regular arrows or any of the um custom arrow types that we talk about in a second what's also very interesting here is is that um uh, as a medium slot weapon, right, it offers a lot of different tactical options for you guys and how to how to incorporate it into your loadout. Like the, for example, there's always been one of the downsides of the crossbow or some of the more specialist weapons that um, you kind of are committed if they are a large slot weapon, right? Which makes sense because crossbow is a very powerful choice, especially with some of the ammunition types it has. And, but the bow is much more of a flexible um, weapon, which we'll see in a minute as we talk about uh, and actually see the gameplay. So that's why we decided to make this a medium slot weapon so you can pair it up with quartermaster or you can go and, and pair it up with two medium um, weapons. And since it's actually rather precise, even at medium distances, it actually still can go very nicely hand in hand for example with a dual wheel set or a shotgun or anything which is more close range so um it will be interesting to see what type of like kits what loadouts you guys come up with uh, to combine them be that like a special ammunition shotgun with it or be that uh, be that like uh, still maybe a, like the classic uh mosin obras um, for safety purposes it's up to you guys uh, will be very interesting to see on top of that it also comes with two new supporting traits so these are two traits that work exclusively for the hunting bow uh, which we'll also talk about in a second and then yeah when the event is over uh this bow will be available for rank 55 uh, sorry 54 um but obviously keep in mind that while the event is running so for the next four weeks you will have to unlock it for the progression of the event um, so if you choose the, the the progression with a bow it will be very quickly unlocked but if you choose the one with the throwing axe then you have to first complete that before you can go to the to the uh, bow progression and then get it in the end of the day everybody will still be able to go and complete both progressions but once the event has concluded um, and for example you didn't, didn't didn't participate in the event shame on you um, then uh, you will still have a chance to unlock the bow um, in a normal progression so none of the gameplay elements are exclusive for the event they're just obtainable first through the event's duration once the event is over they are regular part of the game and you can unlock them in a normal manner and the same goes to the uh, ammo uh, arrow types as well as the traits you for now you will unlock it through the event but obviously after that's over you will unlock it regularly like you do it with everything else in the game and it will come with a cost of 9700 dollars in the store after the event or even during the yes. event right <laughs> And so doing the event, yeah. you, still, you still have to pay for <laughs> still it. Still have I'm to sorry. buy it. Uh, but but uh, yeah, it's basically it's 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 uh, it's it's, uh, it's uh, I think a very fair price for what it can do, the flexibility it gives you. So yeah, but again, let's see if you guys uh, think otherwise. Let us know, give us feedback, and as we do always, I'm pretty sure the future patches might then adjust it up or down depending on what we see. But let's have a first look at the bow now. So as you can see now, this has a charge mechanic, right? So um, that means unlike the crossbow, um, just like pressing the button will not give you a very strong shot because it still pulls a little bit with a delay and then fires with a low power. Only if you keep the button pressed will it actually start keeping charging up and go to the maximum uh, power setting. So you have a trade-off with this weapon between uh, being able to kind of like rapid fire or kind of spam arrows even to a certain extent. Um, 
obviously they drop off much faster they they actually have uh, weaker damage and and uh, slower travel time uh, so slower travel speed but uh, you have a chance to actually keep on shooting which gives it much more flexibility um, however if you want to go for that precision shot this is when you have to pull in obviously you can't sprint during that time you know bow and arrow probably from so many other games uh, so you kind of know what to expect there um, and it uh, just gives you a chance to do like these mid-range precision shots also, or just cut close, um, just bring bring targets down much faster because of the higher power and therefore also the higher damage that the charged shot will do. Um, Let's look at so some yeah, gameplay more straightforward. Yeah, so we can we can go to the next one. So um, this one here is basically just like to see how this goes against grunts uh, again. If you if you shoot at the grunts, uh, uh, depending on where you hit them, sometimes it might not be enough to kill them. It's just been weak shots, and the last one here has been a power shot. Obviously, you must mostly kill like a grunt with the power shots, uh, unless maybe you hit him in the leg or so. Um, so nothing really uh, out of the ordinary there. But uh, that means basically, if a couple of grunts are rushing you, even with a bow and arrow, you can just quickly usually fight them off um, if you have a couple arrows left, and the fire rate is rather high for the low weak shot basically. Um, so you have a chance to fight them um, quite effectively. It's a very great tool, technically, or it's a weapon, but obviously as, as, as a multi-purpose tool for you as a player in, in, your, in your sandbox that uh, can complement very nicely uh, like players who are either running around solo or trying to prefer stealth gameplay. Um, and it's a very nice alternative, for example, to the Nagan pistol or dual Nagan pistol silencers um, or any of the large slot silence weapons. Yeah, this one shows the, uh, the cancellation. Yeah, so so basically, um, if you press the reload button, um, you will you will basically undraw, you will cancel the draw. So you don't need to do any weird like quick swap weapons, or whatever, in order to like like swap to another gun and then uh, go back in order to cancel. Um, you will just be able to just cancel it. So in case you you miscalculated or the target has been killed by by your by your partner before, whatever, you can just press uh, the uh, reload button and it will it will cancel the charge. Yeah, and some of you already asked if you can retrieve arrows or not. Well, here's your answer. Of course you can. <laughs> you can find them. But luckily for you guys, uh, the latest update also has um, a, a adjusted uh, the bolt seer trait, which also works with arrows. So if you are, um, if, if, if you like the type of person like myself who just like loses track of all the stuff all the time, like this trait actually helps you quite a bit in order to retrieve at least a good amount of them um, in case uh, you had a, had a kind of stressful fight. Yeah, let's take a look at that once more. Uh, so meanwhile, yeah, I mean, we can answer. Um, like some people asked, if you uh, is it special mm -hmm. ammo or uh, can you loot yes, them from yes. uh, ammo um, boxes? So, so this 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 is special ammo. Um, just like the crossbow bolts, um, you will get them from special ammo boxes um, or your own ammo, uh, ammo box if you bring one. Um, uh, that being said, though, um, there is a higher capacity uh, uh, with arrows, for example, compared to the bolts, just because um, you have you have this higher rate of fire and the chance to also fire them as a weaker shots. So this is a little bit uh, um, like uh, down to you um, that depending on, on which arrow types you kind of kind of put in. As keep in mind you have two ammo slots, right? So you can you can either bring two normal ones or you bring a special one or two special ones. Really up to you, and uh, have a chance to kind of adjust this to your playstyle. As long as you can you can find them and retrieve them. Usually I never run out of arrows, um, but in some prolonged fights it can really happen. Or if you start using special ammo types, obviously because I mean some of them might not be retrievable. Yeah, and uh, meanwhile, we like can look at the PvP it, yeah. part. Um, uh, yeah, so um, you ha you have a chance to to do some really nice like tricks with this. Like so, with the crossbow, for example, the problem is always that you have a very long reload time, right? So you have a very fixed time between shots. Here, you can you can do combinations. You can do your your primed really uh, powerful initial shot, and if that doesn't kill, uh, you have a chance to follow up with like some weaker arrows. Like here, as you can see, like you hit him around the tower, then he's running away, and you just give him like a like a small little uh, weak shot, which was enough in this case to down the player. So just makes it very flexible. Um, arrows do bleeding, just like the bolts do. Um, so that means um, uh, if you if you get hit by a weak shot, obviously that's that's a weak bleeding effect. If you get uh, hit by like a, by a, by a full charge shot, that might give you a stronger bleeding effect. So it's just something you guys have to play around with a little bit, get a feeling for it. Um, it will feel very intuitive very quickly. Like it's very satisfying to do to do kills with a bow and arrow, and uh, overall usually good fun. What we've seen in testing so far. Yeah, meanwhile, we can look at the longer range fight scenario. Yeah, here, so like 
bone arrow is awesome Dead. but it's not it's not always winning so obviously the longer the range the more you will be seeing yourself at the disadvantage um as uh, like you have to consider the, the drop you have to consider the lead time um i mean a, an arrow flies with i think like a 200 something meters a second which is rather slow um so in this particular case then uh, it might be hard for you to actually use it effectively at longer distances but if someone is actually holding still if, if you if you've spotted like someone behind behind like some cover somewhere on the side picking out you can do some really impressive long range shooting with a bow and arrow as well if you hit yeah <laughs> yes and then uh one of a south, south air gameplay As you can see, yeah, like, I mean, it's like with any weapon you would have had, probably you would have made that kill, but just like making that with a bow and arrow as a science weapon, it's, it's just super satisfying. It feels really, really good. So much of this weapon is about just the feeling of it, the play style, and, and just like uh, kind of role playing a little bit, playing like a really like like stealthy. I mean, just imagine like like uh, the new models using them also, even like like some of the more savage hunters we have, like Kane just running around uh, with that thing. It's 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 very, very impressive and makes you feel really, really cool if you make manage to like pull off some of these kills. But then again, you're up against rifles. You're up against like like modern weaponry. So a bow and arrow isn't automatically always the best choice. So that's why it's good to be able to complement it as a medium slot weapon with other weapons as well, so that you can choose when the right time for the bow and arrow is and when to maybe resort back to a shotgun or a rifle or some other weapon. Or maybe your second bow. It's also a possibility. And as you saw it in the clip, you can insta burn hunters with style this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm not sure, I'm sure if, they, if the community will buy into that argument, but uh, let's let's just leave it as that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't do the event points if you do that, so. I mean, unless you put it out, obviously. <laughs> okay, and uh, right. we mentioned that it comes uh, with multiple arrow types as well. So let's take a closer look at those. Yeah, so the first one is the poison arrow. Um, kind of goes without saying, it's rather straightforward. Um, this one is actually very interesting because it's different to what you already know from the hand crossbow with the poison uh, bolts, which on the hand crossbow, it kind of like impacts uh, and then uh, shatters and leaves a cloud for, for some time on the spot, right? That's different with the poison arrow. The poison arrow actually remains intact because it still has a normal pointy tip. Uh, like like a broadhead and uh, that means it sticks to targets uh, it only does the, the the poison damage though initially but it also does bleeding damage so you get poison and bleeding in one weapon and one ammo type which is really really powerful and on top of that you can also retrieve the arrows the um the downside however is that you only have very few of those arrows available so we're talking about like three extra arrows compared to i think it is eight extra arrows or this is from 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 the regular ones so if you bring poison arrows they're very powerful but you want to be really taking good care of them because um like if you just bring two sets of poison arrows that leaves you at six plus one seven seven arrows and that's not not a lot um so you want to be very very careful with that so Sometimes you just want to combine it with other error types or you want to go completely in. But as you can see, like, I mean, it's super powerful. You just hit AI anywhere, right? And they, they kind of die very quickly. Or like a power shot, even at distance, can kill can kill that armor. It's it's a very effective uh, weapon against against AI, like all poison um, uh, ammo usually is. It's, it's favoring towards the AI um, and, and killing AI. And because of the bleeding damage and the high damage, you can obviously still do some really good killing against even hives with this one. But you just have to understand and learn when to do power shots, like when you charge them up or when you can maybe just like if you have good aim, just like uh, drop enemies uh, briefly by just like doing a weak shot. Um, so mastering the bow is, is a very interesting challenge and it's very good fun. Exactly. And I think uh, in this video, you could even see how you switch between the ammo types, which some of you has asked that right there. I mean, not ammo, but arrow types this time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, both, both works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like with the with the poison, any hit would have just done it, right? In this case, I mean, we're talking about killing grunts, obviously, which is like the biggest of feats you can pull off in, in this game. But still, um, like being able to just like uh, reliably dis dismiss uh, and dispatch like uh, some of the AI is, is powerful. Obviously here, like a power shot against an emulator with poison, um allows you to 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 still kind of make him blow up uh, and and die on the hive i mean if you hit the half that's still gonna be the end of that hive exactly
So the 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 emulator um, um, basically blows up because there's still there's still basically a, a, a tip, right? It still pierces the skin. So it, it's, it's the same way as if you, if you, for example, use an axe against an emulator or bomb lance, right? They still go off, but they die instantly in this case. So that's what the effect you've just seen there on the rail tracks with the, with the emulator dying from the poison, but still because you pierce the skin, he blows up uh, in his final act of defiance. Awesome. And then uh, we also have uh, two other types of... Uh custom arrows uh, so to speak uh let's take a look at frag arrows yeah oh that is this is the, this is an interesting one so everybody goes like oh my god re frag explosive no <laughs> don't worry so this thing has an impact fuse but it's a delayed impact fuse that means uh whenever it hits um like the ground or an enemy whatever it takes like a, a second and a half roughly before it blows up so there's a delayed fuse in it which means this is really cool for for like shooting into rooms or or like being being a bit more tactical about it. but it's actually not that good in direct combat because people can can get quite some distance to it before it goes up and this is also not lethal like um it will take some damage and it's inconvenient because it does the bleeding as it is a frag charge not not a dynamite or explosive charge um, but this is more of a of a instrument to flush players out or enemies out. Obviously, you can also use it against AI, as we will see in the video in a second. But it's uh, it's it's not the main purpose. This one is something you can use in order to stir up chaos. Like you shoot it up in a hunting tower on the lanterns burst. Um, using it against AI is not the preferred way of using it. And if someone is running away from moving around, you will not be able to really lead that target in an open field and make reliable hits against them. So this is a very weak charge, so direct hits will not insta-kill any players. It's purely relying on the on the fragmentation, bleeding damage, um, and uh, it's just an annoyance rather than a direct kill weapon. For that, you want to use your regular arrows. But it's a nice tactical piece of your of your Swiss Army knife, where you can just pull it out at the right moment in order to get a tactical advantage. Some people are asking if you can uh, defuse it. Um, I don't think so at the moment, honestly. Um, it's sim similar to like the the, the, the bomb plants, like that. This this is internally consistent that it mm -hmm. it is not diffusible. We might add that at a later point. Um, it might systemically interact with um, with uh, with the choke. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure how exactly that is in the, in, in the final final implementation we did. But um, overall, um, just the fact that it has a bit of a delay on it, um, and so you can easily run away from it. So just you probably don't even want to run towards it, honestly. Here's a really nice play using it and switching to the regular bolts or arrows. <laughs> yeah, just like trying to flush them out there a little bit, get a bit of splash, but not much. But you actually want to use the regular arrow in order to score that hit. We have another PvP clip for the frag. <laughs> I mean, that had to happen, right? The classic bell tower scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going. Oh, the drop was. Oh, ah. <laughs> that happens sometimes. I, I feel that. Yeah, <laughs> I, it could have worked. I mean, to be fair, what, what, what were the guys up, up there, right? Oh, I'm True. just gonna take the ladder down. Maybe not. <laughs> oh. So as you can see, the fall damage was lethal, <laughs> but the frag arrow was not. Looking at so, the yeah, fall damage was... death screen, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what was important for us is like we didn't want to just replicate the weapon uh, types mm -hmm. or the ammo types that we've seen on the, on the crossbow. We want to offer something new. And uh, um, basically, um, for that purpose, uh, we we came up with the idea of like, if we still want something explosive, but but maybe just use something with frag. First off, like the, the chat will probably freak out the moment they read it uh, until they understand what it actually means, but also because we think it's really good fun. So um, in this case, uh, I think this is a very nice addition and I can't wait to see how you guys play with this uh, tactically and yeah, lure people out. This um is gonna be meta, very much not. <laughs> And yeah, with that being said, let's look at the third one, which is also a bit of an extreme one, I think, which is the Concertina arrows. <laughs> yeah, so this is also an interesting one. Um, again, goes right, right away here. Um, no, this, this this one is as, as tamed as the frag arrow is. Keep in mind, we're talking about a very thin arrow. We're talking about very little stuff you can basically attach to it so all of the effects are rather weak and subtle now they're still interesting enough that you can do some technical choices with it so for example you can use the concertina to i mean if you hit a player with it you can entangle him a little bit which is really cool for crowd control but 
like you probably would have just hit him with a regular arrow as well probably easier because the regular arrow fires with less trajectory right it's faster all these special arrows are fracking arrow they're slower they are, they have more ballistics like more more curvature on them which means they are much harder to aim so i guess a direct attack isn't the best option of what you want to do with the concertina one but you can use it technically you can use it at windows you can use it at the boss layer you can you could use it just generally in situations where we're just barring um the uh, like an entrance just gives you an option of steering things up and in this case like i mean that doesn't feel very comfortable i can tell you <laughs> sure you can't jump out anymore but still like this is not what you want uh, uh, to encounter and the same obviously in the ground level like if, if you have any buildings um uh, doors etc you can trap players or you can maybe on the way uh, when someone is chasing you you can shoot it behind you and just mess up their day because they they now have to find a different route so it's it's just a tactical option do you want to main um like uh, um, um, a bone arrow with just concertina some people probably will but um it's probably not the most effective but more of a meme option but combine combined with maybe some regular arrows this can be giving you some really nice tactical choice oh he missed the bullseye well. on the back <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> So yeah, uh, it will be interesting to see how you guys play with it and and uh, do like interesting situations. Um, curious to read how many people got like their their life saved because of some really weird trick they pulled off with that thing. Let's look at it once more. I keep in mind like all of the all of these special uh, arrows. They are very low count, right? So you don't have many of them. Um, so you have really have to really have to be careful with your three shots you have um, or four if you put it as the first in uh, because it's like the one that's loaded on top but it's it's not a lot and if you want to go for example like um, two uh, two bows um, and each of them gets like uh, two ammo types of concertina uh, first off you're in for quite some money but uh, also like uh, it's still not a lot of lot of things you can do with it right you're very limited so it would be interesting maybe for a round or two just to meme a little bit and try things out but uh, that's not sustainable in any way and probably won't get you that many kills but you could technically bring into uh bows right and then yeah, you, you can <laughs> have, have all, all of the ammo types yeah. in the same round <laughs> yeah <laughs> That would be really cool. Uh, it's up to you. I mean, you can also bring bring uh, four pistols in two True. dual sets right now, True. right? I mean, uh, makes sense. You can be fun. Um, <laughs> it limits you in your tactical choices somewhat, I guess. But uh, that is ultimately your choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, I think we are done with the arrow types, but we also have some new traits for the arrow. And the first one is uh, Dew Claw. Uh, so uh, this trait enhances the melee attack of a bow and arrow so you can even melee crazily with the bow and arrow now and uh, it will unlock at rank 67 uh, obviously this only applies after the event uh, as we mentioned before as well uh, during the event you will unlock it on the event progression and uh, it will cost two upgrade points to equip it. hunter yeah, before we start the video on it um so, so Duke Claw is an interesting uh, choice. Uh, we found this would kind of add something to it because um, as a medium slot weapon, stockless, right? The bow will not do a lot of melee damage. That's something to keep in mind. It's a, it's a, it's like if you were to carry like an Orbis or or like a like a zone of uh, Windfielders or dual pistols, right? Like it, it takes quite a lot of hits. So against AI, it's it's really really weak to rely on the bow for melee. But if you equip that trait then you have a chance that with a pointy um, um, uh, pointy arrows that you have that you can use them for melee. So as long as you still have an arrow, uh, you'll be able to kind of stab with the arrow, which is really, really nice. It feels also very satisfying. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at the video. Nuts. <laughs> Do you claw t-shirt when? Let's hope very soon. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> I'll buy one. I mean, the trade artworks uh, always look super cool. Wow. Real Legolas yeah, as you action. Can see, like, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it takes quite some stamina. So this is, this is like, like uh, we were talking about like um, uh, nothing that you can use against five runs. Like it just doesn't replace your, your, your knife. But um, it's nice to have this option and it is actually really, really powerful. And uh, yeah, kill with style. 
But it's super cool. Like then again, like if you fire the last one at the hellhound, you first need to pick one back up before you can do it. <laughs> so count your count your arrows. <laughs> Obviously, like if you have like uh, like an explosive or a concertina tip, like you still do the regular attack, as you can see, right? Like you won't be able to step with those special ammo times. Um, but the moment you swap over, as you can see here, now uh, your claw is available and uh, gives you a chance to to do that. And that's uh, if you if you have a poison arrow and you do melee, you also do poison damage on top, which means we by accident just introduced our very first poison melee weapon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's the Q claw. Um, but we also have another trait, uh, which is called Hundred Hands, and uh, this trait increases the damage of a hunting bow shot at full draw by twenty five percent, and also reduces sway whilst at full draw. So this this is basically a direct buff for for the full draw. So um, it takes just a little bit longer to fully draw in this case, and because it's just a little bit more, you can you can you can pull the arrow back. So there's a time factor, obviously, you have to consider here. Um, but uh, then it just kind of boosts you a little bit, so that that the arrows just do a little bit more damage. And um, also, mm -hmm. normally when you just aim with a bone arrow uh, in full draw, you have a little bit more of sway step by step. It's not really a lot, but you will notice that you might have seen it already in some of the clips before, so that like it starts swaying a little more because it kind of takes some effort in order to to, to keep the keep the bow under tension. Um, and that effect is also negated uh, when you have 100 hands because just like that that force, that, 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 that tension is not um, so demanding for you personally anymore, so you just be able to manage this easier. And uh, so again, this is just a chance for you to to kind of boost it if you want to if you want to uh, like go bow uh, with a priority. Maybe you want to put your future trade points into that and just upgrade that weapon a little bit and makes it a bit more a bit more competitive. Maybe exactly. And uh, as uh, before as well, this trade will unlock at rank sixty after the event is over, and uh, it will cost three upgrade points compared to two of the previous trade. And here is the amazing artwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really like this one. Uh, Ina, Ina at her best again. Literally um, 100 hands, one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, one thing, because this came up as a question in the chat. Um, so uh, whether whether uh, 100 hands will be able to one-hit kill. Um, yes, it will. But also a full drawn bow to the upper body can also allow you at short ranges to do a one-hit kill already obviously at longer distances this is this is not a thing but like the bow is a powerful weapon and if you take time to charge it up keep in mind you can't be as flexible maybe as with the crossbow where it's preloaded right and, and you just need to release the trigger you will actually have to have to spend that moment or to pull it all the way back which in pvp is is tough you might not have that moment but in case you're prepared for it um then you can actually do uh, and strike down a player with a with a powerful like upper torso shot obviously headshots are lethal but um if you if you if you play this well um like with a crossbow you have a chance to to kill people and uh, with 100 hands obviously a bit more damage there so it's a bit easier even pulling this off yeah as always you but will be able to check to yeah, uh, as always, you'll be able to check out the stats for the bow in the menus for exact uh, numbers of the effective range. And uh, at full draw, it will increase uh, by 25%, basically, I guess, the damage yeah. at, at least. I mean, so. The effect it will have is primarily on the on the regular arrow and the poison arrow, right? Like, this doesn't really affect damage-wise, uh, like the frag or the, the concertina arrows. Um, so so damage-wise, um, only the ones with a pointy, pointy end will be really be boosted okay but enough talk of uh the uh hunting bow and uh let's talk about our other new addition to the game uh, a new tool uh the throwing axe so we have a bunch of stuff for this as well uh this is going to be a new tool so not a new weapon but a tool so you'll be able to equip it in your tool slot and uh you will carry two axes uh when you purchase it but it also can be picked up again just like uh the arrow was or the throwing knives in the game uh this will also come with a new supporting trait which we will show you in a second and uh it will uh 
unlock via the combat x progression uh, after the event is over so uh, you can go into the book of weapons and look at the progression with the combat x and you will be able to find the throwing x there so that's how you will unlock it after the event is over so it's not rank based uh, like the bow basically but uh, progression based in the book of weapons and uh, the store price will be 60 bucks for this weapon yeah, uh, what's what's really interesting about the throwing axe is that um it it kind of sits right between for example the heavy knife and uh, the, the the throwing knives because it is on one hand it's actually still a, a quite decent melee tool so it has power it has even more power than heavy knife but mm -hmm. uh, it's balanced through the amount of stamina it takes so it's not a very economical weapon like it's similar to how we balance the, the knuckle knife versus the dusters versus the knife versus the heavy knife versus the throwing knives now we have one more as part of this family right so the idea is that it's it's about being good at certain things and being a bit weaker in other things and it's down to you to your choice on how you want to combine it so people can bring um the throwing axe as 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 their like melee tool of choice as long as they realize that maybe against a pack of hellhounds or several grunts they might be in trouble because they run out of stamina before but then again you can still throw them so you might be able to just like melee two of them and then uh you throw throw the two axes like at the two others and if you're good maybe that's good enough it's for you to experiment with this it's for you to try this out and uh it just gives you gives you a chance to 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 play with it obviously the throwing axe is better against specific AI than than uh, and, and weaker against others. So let's have a look at the videos and see how this plays because I think it's really really interesting. So yeah, just just basically aim. As you can see, like the it has a much stronger fall off. So at distance, it's it's not as as uh, easy to hit than, for example, the the throwing knives. But um, just like with those, you can pick them up and use them again. And uh, I think just that like animation alone just just makes me want to pick that probably every time for the next so four cool. weeks at least. <laughs> you could see that it couldn't penetrate the metal surface, only the wood. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of, kind of only sticks to two surfaces that it can can attach itself to. Actually, yeah, really uh, talking of that, I saw I uh, seen some questions about the arrow as well uh, regarding mm -hmm. penetration. Yeah, so the uh, arrow arrow is is working uh, like the crossbow ball. So they they stick to 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 um, like non-metallic surfaces, and uh, obviously they stick to 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 um, limbs and and uh, body parts. Um, and um, yeah, whatever you've you've already trained to consider for the bolts uh, is applying here as well. So don't expect it to stick into metal sheets. That makes sense. And here, meanwhile, we can see the melee uh, with the X, like you mentioned. The light melee is on the heavy one. And the tired yeah, so one. This basically, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so so um, again, like the, the, depending on how you go about it, um, you will be able to maybe even like kill like two grunts next to each other. So let's just see how this all plays out a little bit in gameplay. So this is actually using the, the legendary version, um, the Tomahawk, which is really nice. So you can see like like kill just like two with one heavy strike, uh, kill the other one. But now your stamina is out, so you could kill those four. But if there would have been a fifth grunt, you wouldn't need to take a tired attack. So again, it's balance of damage versus stamina consumption with this uh, capacity, like um, how many you have, etc. So uh, it should sit very nicely in the melee tool system, and then it's down to you to pick the one you like. And in this example, you could also see that you can pick them up after throwing them easily. Yeah, like the armored stake, like for example, if you hit an armored in the upper torso, like one one tomahawk is enough to bring it down, which feels super satisfying, I must say. So like if, if you if you want to have like the heavy hitter, um, then the tomahawk or the throwing axe is for you. Um, but I mean, the moment there's more enemies coming, you better quickly pick up <laughs> that thing. Otherwise, uh, you might be in trouble. Um, so you, you can throw with no stamina, just like the throwing knives, uh, but it obviously consumes stamina as you throw as well. So you still uh, kind of impede it a little at bit it again. because you cannot do the melee attack so quickly. That's so that's satisfying I, to kill an armor with one hit though. Yeah, yeah but you have to hit him, you have to hit him, hit him like square in the chest or the yeah. back, right? Like, so the moment you hit you the shoulder shoulder guard, like the, the bony bony stuff on the big arm, like it, it just embeds himself in there and just keeps on coming. Then you definitely need to use the second one and then let's just hope that wasn't the second <laughs> arm on the round. And the, what about concertina armors i seen in the chat? Um, so concertina armors will probably take like one more. 
um, mm -hmm. to, 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 to bring down, but um, try it out. Uh, you will be able to test it all um, and, and, and unlock it and have fun with it when the event starts tomorrow on live service. So here and uh, we've seen some PVE action, but let's look at the PvP. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so so I, I, w I was asked to show this because <laughs> they took him so many takes to record it. And I think it's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, so so you can see it from the other side as well. So like it's it's very satisfying if you, if you hit someone uh, at that distance, uh, uh, just like being able to score that that kill. I mean you've seen it and you probably got like really really excited when you saw the videos that we released, right? Like where like you see see the 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 the, um, the, the, the wayfarer I think was it one of the natives um like rampaging and throwing that 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 thing around and destroying that one team and uh, you can really you can really do that also in game here that, i yeah, feel like this cool red shirt died that... in every video so far yeah. <laughs> uh, for... oh <laughs> Right Redemption. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, this 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 is just Frikadella that wants to show that he killed someone with it. That's why he <laughs> wanted me to show the video. <laughs> no, it's actually some really good fun. <laughs> oh, that would be really scary to get killed like that, to be honest. <laughs> like something flying in your face. <laughs> oh. Yeah, good fun. You guys will you guys will have so much fun with this um, uh, on the event and then also after the event. So um, really curious to see how this will spice up um, like uh, the gunplay specifically and how many people will bring it, how many people will will go after the people who bring it, and how many people just in general like engage with that stuff. So servers are ready. We are ready. Um, tomorrow will be the day. Let's go very soon and. Uh... We have a trait for the throwing axe as well, we mentioned earlier. Uh, so it's called Assailant, which I actually, before, <laughs> when we prepared the presentation, I mistyped like 20 times in a row. Uh, <laughs> but that is helped me fix it. So, <laughs> uh, this you, you, always got, you always got the first three letters right, I don't know why. <laughs> There's too many A's in that word, I feel. <laughs> uh, so this trait increases the melee damage of throwing knives and throwing axes. So it also works on throwing knives. Wow. Uh, so this this is gonna be like this this is like the little cherry on top here is that that um, not only will you be able to use assailant to boost uh, the throwing axe but it will also have a very nice effect on throwing knife which you guys will see uh, as the last thing uh, once we've shown assailant on the on the throwing axe. Uh, and the trait unlocks at rank 11 obviously after the event as always uh, in this case and will cost two upgrade points. And uh, let's look at the artwork. <laughs> That's really cool. I love it as well. And uh, All right, so so you you've guys seen the melee uh, attacks on the throwing axe, and we just just uh, showed the other clips a minute ago. Um, so let's have a look at how this looks with the trait being active. Exactly. So like they basically uh, assailant gives you custom custom the animation. So like you have much different uh, uh, like swipes, uh, and it just feels a bit more satisfying. Um, Obviously, with the higher damage it does, um, this becomes even more of a threat up close. So um, there, there's your, there's your definitely your, your competition to a machete. But as you can see with the stamina consumption, you still can't do that many strikes. So you better hit him. Or take a stamina shot. Alternatively, or yeah. Or take a stamina yeah. shot, yeah. Right, let's show them with the other. Uh, I, uh, the, for the throwing knives, we have yeah, exactly. Uh, we have it with no trait on first. Yeah, so so just just to 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 remember, so this is how the throwing knife does melee, which I think very few people <laughs> uh, might remember because it's normally not what you do. Uh, so it's like two times slash attacks, heavy and regular is both slash, but it's weak and uh, like you you usually um, don't want to use that um, because it's just a small little, little flimsy knife. But now let's have a look at how it looks when we put the Trade Trade on. Let's see. So with that, oh. we basically turn it into a stab weapon. So obviously the regular attack is still very weak, but if you do the heavy attack with it, I mean, you can now you're gonna have to hold it in order to to, to actually project some thrust there. Um, but it can actually stand in as a replacement for the knife if you consider that it does uh, consume more more stamina per attack for the heavy ones. So you do get the chance now, if you are daring, to not bring a knife, but just bring throwing knives. And if you have the trait, you can kill like the occasional grunt or whatever comes your way. But you just keep in mind that uh, there's going to be, I think it's like one attack less or so, one heavy attack less you can do. So um, 
you don't want to like uh, be caught down with your pants down by the AI when you do that. So. Oh my god, he, it's so cool how he spins the throwing knife before the heavy melee attack. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like the, the animation work that went into like all of the weapons uh, in general, just like the love that we've seen from the character art guys, from animators, from the designers, audio people. Like this, everybody has been pouring so much energy into this. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, 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 really happy and proud uh, like how this all turned out. Like this, this is this is honestly like uh, an amazing piece of work for all the new weapons, the traits, and then just add like this amazing event around that and i think this is just a winner package um, i'm really really excited to, like, to get the ball rolling tomorrow and then play with you guys exactly and uh we uh came to the end of the stream but we could do a quick re recap just to remind you guys the event is starting uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m utc so that means 4 p.m uh, cest which is european central time and uh yeah you can start your progression choosing your path and unlocking everything uh and now we can answer your questions uh that you may give, have for us give give like a chance before we do that before we add i mean you guys can already start typing down your questions if you have any and we keep track of them but mm -hmm. uh before that maybe let's do just a quick recap uh saying yeah <laughs> Welcome, welcome, join. Welcome back. Yeah, right. That's, that's actually <laughs> that's actually my stream, right? <laughs> let's 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 come back to the to the to the, to the really important stuff, which is just about like the event, just to recap uh, a little bit uh, what people. I mean, for 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 guys who joined probably later and didn't catch at the start, so there will be event that's uh, that starts in tomorrow. And as you might see, there will be like two different passes. So hunting ball pass and throw an axe pass and they're quite different by the like feelings and support what you can get uh basically you can get in a um, uh throwing axe pass like you you first unlock your uh, base weapon throwing axe and also you will be able to earn some in between reward as like blood bonds hundred dollars and also unlock the trait what dennis just was talking about um, but after the completing the first pass, you will be able to proceed to the next pass. So actually, you can complete both of them. So uh, basically, there will be four daily caps. As, reg as regular, we have these four previous events, but those daily caps will be presented only on your first chosen progression. So once you completed the first, you can move forward, and there will be like no daily caps after like last daily cap, that which presented this uh, suspended there. Um, so if you are choosing the uh, bow, uh, hunting bow um, pass, then you will be able to earn uh, all these legendary skins that marked in this progression, as well as gameplay stuff like uh, custom, custom, custom arrows uh, trade there. There will be no feeling rewards as a blood bond and handler, so if you can earn some uh, some currency, so throw an axe pass for you if you want to unlock uh, in gameplay stuff first that's for you uh, but also um, there is uh, different ways how to earn points so if you are picking the uh, hunting ball then you will get additional points for killing hives with ball and if you are picking the throwing axe that you will get additional points for killing armored with a throwing axe but since points are shared and if you're playing together in the team and if you're playing with for different uh different passes that you can actually constantly earn points with your base base weapon or tool there so and accumulate points and like multiply them um so, so i so there was like one question that was repeated all the time can i earn uh points for killing uh, armors with a throwing axe if i picked Bow, if I'm playing bow and arrow progress, hunting bow progression, yes, you can because you can you can find uh, hunting bow and throwing axe in a quick play as well. So you can pick it up, uh, kill armored, kill hive, and still earn points. But this the the only thing that is like inconsistent for you. So while you are on the path of bow, uh, the consistent way to earn additional points is killing hives uh, with hunting bow and vice versa for throwing axe, uh, killing armored with it. Um, also, it was as was mentioned, uh, quick play so far, you will be able to find 15 proof consumables there in the quick play. Uh, we also given you at the start of the each progression to 25 proof boots, uh, 25 five proof vapors, um, two times at the start of the each progression. So at the start when you're choosing the first one, get two of them. If you will move and when you will move to the second progression, you will get them at the start as well. You can also buy them in the event store page. 
uh, there will be presented three different types and boost consumable this time boost not only event points but also the range on which uh, event objects in the dark side highlight so right now we have uh, two ways how to earn points with the uh, exploration pass that dis destroying pyres extinguishing pyres and interacting with the ward and those items, they will be visible in the dark side, even without boost consumable, the default range where, when they're visible is 10 meters, and you can boost it up to 70 meters with like combination of different type of consumable. And of course, bonus is stuck uh, um, among the team, but unlike um, event points, boost percentages uh, uh, range has hard cap 70 meters, so that's the maximum range. I think that's that's what's really cool about that is that uh, you have like one more reason to actually bring one of those consumables and definitely guys you got two two times two free use them because they're really 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 good in order just like to find stuff. Think of it like that like you you, you use the boost consumable not only to boost the score that you will get at the end right like the, the multiplayer but also you have a higher chance of actually finding the stuff. So just having having that in the team I think that's just overall just very beneficial and just allows you to unlock the stuff a little bit faster. And that's obviously you're the best player in the world and you don't need any of that which is perfectly fine because most of you guys are so literally, literally the boost consumable for this event like with this vapors today carrying two mechanics like one is direct boost which is like boosting like your collected event points and another is indirect boost because like the more you see of course the more you will you will collect the more points you will earn and the more will be multiplied in the end um also just a reminder again that the uh, points from the first progression will not be carried to the second progression so guys you are finishing at the 1000 point the first progression uh you will get the final unlock of this progression one of the hunter and then you will be moved to the second progression and you will start with zero because at zero point you actually get in there uh tw two times 25 proof vapors you we couldn't hear you at the end, but uh, uh, is it uh, at least for a still? second. Yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, okay. I seen I, I, I seen some questions uh, like compared to the other events. When uh, what happens if you completely complete the whole progression and uh, like uh, both paths? <laughs> If you completely complete the both progression, <laughs> then you can start completely completing the bonus part, which is like ten thousand additional. Um, event points which will be converted to hundred dollars with the exchange rate one to one yeah so this is basically just like a, a container right so there's always still something for you guys to do uh, so even if you if you rush through events early uh, as soon as you can and then just get the stuff depending on the day logs um you still have a chance to continue playing because at the end of the event they will just be converted over and you can, you can just get something for it also important part because I, I saw some questions in, in the chat uh, that people asking if we can switch the progression when we already progress in there. No, that's not possible. So once you like choose wisely, choose the first one, complete the first one, start moving uh, with the with the second one. So there's a question: What happens if you prestige during uh, the progression? uh in the event because then you would reset your unlock for the weapons so do you, can you still play with them or uh so if if you unlock uh base uh weapon or tool uh hunting bow or throwing axe uh if you already unlocked uh trade if you already unlocked custom armor uh, custom arrows sorry <laughs> for for a hunting bow that you st when you, if your precision while event is still running then you do not lose them you keep them because you already unlock them during the event event running like right now already so there is like no reason to take it away from you guys but if your precision when event is concluded um and over and now like the unlock is regular ranking progression then if you prestige there you of course will lose this stuff Yes, and it, one one word of caution. Um, I think it is, is also listed in the uh, patch notes. Uh, then um, we at the moment still, I think have one bug, which we hope to be able to to hot fix very soon. As long as with some other bugs, obviously, um, that uh, the first prestige uh, at the moment might not give you the stuff back directly. So there's a chance of that happening. Um, mm -hmm. So best piece of advice at the moment: just play the first couple of days without prestiging um, until you see that one being fixed uh, in, in the update and then uh, you can proceed from that point on just to be on the safe side and you don't miss out on the stuff oh, uh, minor inconvenience we're sorry for that but uh, just so as a word of warning then for you guys 
So I've seen some questions regarding quick play and uh, are you able to find uh, the throwing axe or the bow in quick play? Yes, yes, you can find both of those in quick play. And uh, as Xenia was saying, you can also find the 15 proof um, uh, vapors also in quick play. Uh, so if you don't want to wanna spend blood bonds, just go play a bit of quick play, win the rounds and you get some as well. Mm, some people asking if it's coming to the test servers. It's not. It, it's gonna be live tomorrow at, at 2 p.m. Oh, UTC. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're directing live server. So we had we had the test server period for 161 already. This is actually where we test a lot of the stuff under the hood without you guys noticing. Haha. <laughs> um, and uh, now that allows us to basically roll out uh, all of these cool features directly to the live environment. Uh, also, uh, thanks again to our to our external testing group um, that has helped us over the last uh, month and two um, to kind of play test with the bow a little bit and just get get some initial feedback and impressions so even though it wasn't on the public test server we still had community people participate and give us their feedback and uh, i think it really shows again like with the custom ammo uh, and and scrapic and all the other stuff we've been working on the new map that's uh, getting you guys involved um getting key people from the community to assist us is really really a good healthy thing and uh, so thanks a lot for supporting us on this I, I would also like answer a couple of other questions that popping up like constantly there since Absolutely. we had so 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 little time for details. Um, there are question like uh, because like players got used to clues that we are using every event like this for a specific themed clues. This time, the all clues will be regular and will not give you points, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> or maybe not. So no clues. Uh, but instead we have words and also like uh, answering the question will words notify that there are like another team nearby after the interaction um, I mentioned at the start of the stream that actually the first team that interacts with the word uh, just a reminder that every team can interact with word once um, uh, while interacting so the first team interacting with the word they will light up the torches on this word and they will stay there so you can just see that someone before already activated you but it will not give you like uh, any other information beside this so it's a bit like the clues where you can see if someone touched them before so you can tell that one team has been there but nothing else basically uh some people are asking about the bolt thrower trait uh with the bow no that one that one uh is is exclusive uh for the crossbow so um, the Bolt Zia trait, which also shares the name Bolt, obviously that's, that might be a bit misleading to players because that one actually shows you also throwing knives, the throwing axe, arrows, or basically everything you can throw and then kind of have to retrieve from the world. Maybe in the future we'll, we'll have to rename that um, as we get yeah. more different things it's useful for uh, compared to initial uh, release. Um, but uh, the Bolt Thrower trait, because that was the question, uh, that is specific to the crossbow and um, the bow and arrow, the hunting bow has, has two exclusive own traits that help it instead uh those um, were, actually I, I, oh. I got some clarification um from from something i couldn't answer earlier um, um uh, which is whether um dauntless works for the frag arrow and it 100 percent does oh <laughs> it does actually here. that's really cool uh so some people asked about the dlc hunter uh you can actually already get it on steam right now so you can already play with that and about the necro shirt uh, i've seen some people mentioning it you can also get that on amazon so just uh, look up, I guess, Necromancer T-shirt hunt showdown, and you can find it. And uh, we match. always update our merch store as well. <laughs> Maybe we'll have something for this event as well. Who knows, you know? So just keep an eye out for all that stuff. Uh, does pitcher work with throwing axes? No, but it does also not work with the throwing knives. So that's consistent in this regard. Pitcher, pitcher is for explosives and uh, not for weapons. Mm -hmm. um, I had a couple additional bow and arrow questions here. Let me just quickly while um, put them up here, pull them up. Um, da, 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 da. um okay, this one we answered. Then when you pick poison arrows up, are they still regular arrows then or are they poison arrows or what uh, they just remain poison arrows. So, so you can you can reuse poison arrows. If you fire a poison arrow uh, and you have poison arrows as your ammo loadout, you can resupply them. Um, obviously if you don't have them, you don't you don't have, a, don't have a chance to resupply them. So you need to keep uh, using the same ammo type. Um, 
but uh, you will not be able to turn one into the other or, or swap things out that way. Um, then there was a question about um, um, whether t we, we're going to change the uh, the Tomahawk uh, trophy slash achievement. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no, this will still remain exclusive for using the world uh, throwing axe or like the heavy axe, the wood axe. Uh, um, and and the hammer basically these type of items. Uh, so, no easy way for you to getting that by just using the the, the, the throwing X uh, tool. Um, that there was also a question uh, earlier about uh, exploitation, whether it's possible to just like farm people for event points and stuff. So at the moment, the rule is that uh, you can only get per player these event points once per round. So even if they're being revived and you loot them again, you've already got them from that person. So. Uh, that exploit is safe. There's no way for you to 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 gather points that way. Uh, I see that YouTube uh, chat asking if uh, I'm reading the chat. I am indeed reading you guys as well. Uh, so Facebook, uh, Twitter. I mean not Twitter but Twitch and the YouTube. I see you all. So don't worry. <laughs> Try to answer questions from each chat. Uh, there was there was someone asking whether you have to extract to get the points. Um, no, so so that's that's a difference uh, that we always have when we have an event running. Um, if you are uh, earning event points, even if you die, you get exactly those event points to progress. You don't have to bring them off the mission, because otherwise you basically have people playing it super safe and always running for the extract. No nice fights happening. So just consider this to be a nice little side effect. With a boost consumable, you can get even more on top if you want. Um, if you had a good round, obviously that that then pays off. But um, you don't need to extract that. You just need to earn them. And uh, if you die a moment later, you still got these points and progress in the event. Uh, so uh, there's a question. Just, we are, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to clarify uh, one thing that we said earlier, that the uh, boost consumable gives you um, increased range for the dark side vision, but, uh, but only for the highlighted object in the dark side, event object. Like no, no other vision we do not increase with the boot consumable. So only for collecting, only for extinguishing more pyres, and only for interfinding and interacting more wards there. That's for what you can use boot consumable. Yeah, no, no pay to see for gameplay features. <laughs> Exactly. So I also wanted to uh, just answer something that we have already answered earlier. Is that uh, if you uh, have uh, completed the path for uh, the arrow and. Uh, you can uh, and you are doing the let's say the throwing x you uh, still get points for the arrow as well if you use it and uh, also if your teammates are using the other weapon time uh, type and are like let's say they're killing a hive with the hunting bow you will also get that point as well so it's all shared within the team there is actually one one important point uh, in in a comment that like we didn't even mention that uh, so to complete each of the progression you will need to collect one thousand points so one thousand points for bow and arrow pass hunting bow pass and one thousand points for throwing axe so like once you earn one thousand points you will unlock the legendary hunter skin and of course like uh, all all rewards already will be unlocked for you. Okay, so uh, there's actually some questions about the daily caps uh, because we didn't really go into too much detail on that. So uh, how are those exactly and how many days or how does that work? So we will have actually four daily caps and they will be like uh, milestones for you and place will be for uh, only first chosen progression for you. So neither either uh, hunting bow or throwing axe. And... Um, and there will be on hunting bow on the legendary skin on the legendary skin which like themed either hunting bow or thrown axe skin and on the last hunter skin so when you're reaching the daily daily lock you can't earn points anymore you can't progress further so you are getting this unlock and then you need to wait until lock is suspended but instead of the uh getting event points you will be able to earn hunter xp so you keep you keep interacting you keep extinguishing pyres you can you keep interacting with wars looting uh hunter corpses and killing the boss and instead of event points you will earn hunter xp exactly and uh, how many caps are there just to clarify that as well 
four that's how i started my answer okay so yeah but uh, so you have one on the first day and then on the second day third and fourth and then you are yeah, done with, with the, all the with caps the, basically with the, with a with a step 24 hours so first 24 hours then 48 hours and like 72 and, so and 96 <laughs> and we always end the cap that you always have a nice unlock exactly and you have uh uh like oh, how, how many days i think it ends on the, the 22nd of next month so you will have almost a month uh, to complete this event so the caps are only for the fir very first four days basically and after that you are free to earn points as you want so basically Sorry. yes uh, all, all caps they 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 will be suspended in the weekend after we start in the event and then you you will have like three free weeks uh to earn like all rewards okay i think we answered most of the questions uh obviously if you guys still have questions uh we'll always try to answer it on social media or on discord so uh just make sure to leave your questions uh somewhere and uh, we'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible uh but i think we had quite a long stream and uh dennis's dinner <laughs> no. is probably already like cold at this point so <laughs> uh i thank you guys for participating senia and dennis uh i know it was a very long uh, preparation and also stream for you so thank you again uh and it's, it's been a pleasure presenting it it's been amazing and i think <laughs> this event will really really be shining and just keep in mind guys there's been like a huge team that loves the game just as much as you do and and we do all we can to make this the best and sometimes the road is a bit rough sometimes it's rather smooth and uh, whenever it's rough we also straighten it out as soon as we can so enjoy yeah. the event have fun and uh get all the points yeah and yeah, additionally tomorrow oh, to utc to utc 2 p.m utc tomorrow exactly tomorrow get ready yeah and Could additionally guys we'll have a gameplay stream uh tomorrow as well uh maybe at four or five we will announce it obviously where we show the event live uh i think we will have uh ari our community manager as well as iceman 2k or rick joining us for some gameplay so uh you will be able to watch us as well how we struggle through uh the first part of the event so make sure to tune into that as well uh, and again 2 p.m utc or 4 p.m cst make sure to join the event uh, participate and unlock those awesome rewards uh again thank you dennis senia for joining us today thank you chat for behaving very nicely today uh, and uh, see you guys in the bayou with all the skins and hunters and uh, we wish you all a good evening or morning or midday wherever you are obviously <laughs> and uh, with that bye -bye. being said uh, bye bye and thank you everyone have a good bye. evening thank you so we go and slow we
The seeds we sow, the fruit we reap. The tide of death is rising. Ain't no grave can hold me down. One foot in hell, one sacred. So